I like that game intro. Caught my eye, definitely, that one did. Anyway, hi, it's PJ here. And today we've got another PC release. We're looking at Shadow Warrior 2. And we're going to go through all the options, check out the sound, graphics, controller, and anything else that's there available to be tweaked. I'll focus on the uh, graphics video settings, obviously, quite a lot. We'll go through all the presets, the low, medium, high, ultra, or whatever they've got on there. And as you can see, we've got the MSI overlay running in the bottom right-hand corner. So we'll be able to check out VRAM usage, how well it spreads across the CPU cores, and also, of course, what, what we can get this game down to, minimum spec, so we can see what sort of level of uh, GPU or computer it's going to run on. So if we dive straight into the options now and get cracking on it. Photo mode. There we go. On controller. Yes, on controller. Ooh. How do we go up? Okay. Probably going to be easier on mouse keyboard, guys. Okay, so... Mouse wheel does nothing. So what we got here, Doff, Bloom, Vignet, etc, etc. Hmm. No. No. LB and RB, it says adjust things, but don't appear to, do they? Hmm. Let's try that again. Okay, so normal movement keys are moving the camera around. Okay, so we got F5 being screenshot, fast play, slow play, yep, yeah, got all that. Rotate camera. Yep. Yeah. Move camera. Yep. Slow play forward, reset all, hide UI. But how do we adjust these? Oh, here we go. There's your doff. Bloom. Vignet. SSAO. Shadow tint. Image settings. Hmm. Image effects. Yeah, you can have all your sapia filters and stuff on there. Film grain intensities and stuff. Okay. Back to camera again. Okay, so we just take a quick snapshot of the sadly damaged car there. This would, be, this would make some nice useful shots out of this game. And what is it to get rid of the UI V? Shift the mouse out of the way, shift my display, F5 takes the picture, yeah? Indeed it does. And where does that save it to? Oh yeah, documents, okay. So there we go guys, photo mode. It does work, it's nice. I reckon you can get some pretty stunning shots from this game. There we go. Okay, moving so on. So let's check the controller options out. We have the Xbox One controller plugged in and working now, as you can see. No problem there. So we've got button layout, default or left-handed. Default and left-handed for triggers. And the same for stick layout. Invert, aim assist, sensitivity settings, vibration on and off. Pretty straightforward then. Now, let's plug in a DS4. See if it supports it. Here we go. We're on. Light is on, yeah. Okay, so controller. Mm. No. Absolutely not. PCs used this before, so uh, it's clear the game is just not not compatible. Maybe if you use the third-party app, you can get that working. But uh, no, sadly not, not working. Unplug that. Back to my X1 controller. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So if we go, 
let's try this photo mode out, shall we? We got let's have a look options video. I'm on mouse at the moment. Yeah, um, got an Xbox One controller here. Does it? I, I think it does actually switch natively between them. Um, we'll try that in a minute. We'll plug it in. I'm pretty sure I loaded it earlier on just to make sure the game loaded without crashing out before this video. And I was switching natively between the Xbox controller and a mouse. So I uh, don't know what's going on there. We'll give it another go in a bit. Anyway, for now, let's crack on with these options. So the first one is Game and HUD. Uh, we got different language options there for you. Quite a few. Pretty good. I won't change that, obviously. I'll be struggling from here on, otherwise. Enable subtitles on and off. Enable hints on and off. I'll personally leave that on because I've never played the first Shadow Warrior, so I wouldn't know what I'm doing on this game. Use pick up with attack key on and off. Uh, weapon settings, auto change. Melee weapon steering. Oh, that's different, isn't it? Casual, basic, and advanced. Well, I guess I'm casual. We'll leave it on casual. Weapon inertia. Something to play around with. HUD settings. Show control hints. Show damage. Show enemy information. Disabled. Health bar only. Health bar with name, basic and all. Okay. Show HUD. Yep. On and off. Now I noticed this game's got a photo mode. So I wonder if the photo mode automatically takes the HUD off or not. We'll have to try that in a minute and find out. Um, okay. So opacity, scale, show minimap on and off. Just drag this down here and have a look at the rest of these. Enemies, players, items. This is what you want to see on your mini map. NPCs, chests, and other. You'd leave them all enabled there, or I certainly would. Uh, show mission goals. Yep. Track mission items. Multiplayer indicator. Well, we got name only, or name and health bar, or none. Okay. Show crosshair. Scale, color, and alpha effect. Alpha effects can't be right. Must be something else. Not sure. I'd have to look that one up, guys. Maybe one of you guys know. If you know what alpha means at the bottom here, something to do with colour and contrast, I guess. I don't know. Drop me a comment. Let me know exactly what this does. Yeah. Okay. So, audio. Global volume. Now it's picked up and running uh, 2.1, well I'm running 2.1, but it's picked up a stereo pair of speakers, yeah, so to me that suggests if you're in a 5.1 it should support it, be quite interesting to try that out, something I keep meaning to do is hook up a 5.1 to this so we can switch between them and try different games, too many games nowadays are only supporting stereo, it's better if you've got the option isn't it really. Uh, different volumes uh, for sound effects, music and voice, and force stereo. Now, I would imagine that would come into play if you were using a 5.1 or a 7.1 system. You could force it to use just stereo, maybe for if you're in a headset. You know, we'll see. Uh, okay, so we've got mouse and keyboard settings. Sensitivity, invert, smooth. hate mouse smoothing. A bit like mouse acceleration. <laughs> it just, just doesn't feel right, does it? You'll know what I mean if you're a mouse keyboard player. Anyway, primary attack buttons, they make sense. Reload, yeah, all your weapons are on numbers. Uh, weapon wheel, so you can switch between your weapons by spinning your mouse wheel around. Excellent. Uh, ranged weapon, alternate melee weapon. Previous weapon, next weapon, yeah. Standard stuff and WSAD for movement, as expected. You can rotate using the arrows. All standard keys, really, guys. Spaces, jump. Just what you'd expect. Crouch there for control. Use pick up. There you go. Photo mode, F9. So we'll give that a whirl in a bit. See if it leaves the hood on or not. See what you can do with it. Must be quite a confident uh, devs and artists there. Must be quite a good looking game, this. If they've been, you know, input a photo mode. We'll see. Uh, right, so what we covered. I guess we go to video now, the big one then, aren't we? So let's see what it's defaulted to for myself. Um, this system being an FX8350 at 4.2, 16 gigabytes of RAM at 1833, and an R9 290X 4 gigabyte card. So uh, not the most modern systems nowadays, but uh, normally enough to run most of the new stuff fine. Let's see. Okay, so we've defaulted with a field of view at 65. 
I'll, I'll probably expect that a bit higher than 65. We'll see what it looks like. We've got gamma options there. Display mode full screen, windowed or windowed full screen, standard stuff. If you're running more than one display there, more than one graphics card, you can switch between them. Refresh rate, default or 60 hertz, yep. Aspect ratio, oh, we support 16 by 10. And old school, 4.3. Wow. Uh, resolution, we have set to 1440p. This game is giving me the vibe straight away that you'd be able to run this on a, uh, shall we say, cheaper system. You're not going to need state-of-the-art hardware to run it by the look of things. And that's good, that's reassuring. Still an awful lot of people out there with a 2 gigabyte or less uh, graphics card. So, triple buffering on or off. It's off as default, okay. HDR display. It's an interesting monitor. Mm, nice to see on a PC game. Can't test it, my monitor, not HDR. Uh, I am thinking of a monitor upgrade, but I'm thinking of ultra wide rather than a HDR display. We shall see. So watch the prices. V-Sync synchronization, yeah, on or off. Oh, we got a half rate as well. So effectively drop you down to 30 frames per second on a 60 TV, or sorry, a 60 monitor. So we'll leave that on. NVIDIA Multi-Res Shading. Well, yeah, that's disabled for me. Guys, if you've got an NVIDIA card, any chance you can drop in the comments and tell me if that's like really good or just a, a naff effect that you can't really tell the difference for. Be interested to know. I've got a buddy who runs the NVIDIA test for me normally and he's on holiday. Pretty inconsiderate. I cannot try my NVIDIA uh, options out. Sorry about that. But uh, if one of you guys could chip in, be helpful, yeah? Okay, so overall graphics quality it has set to ultra. And we have high, medium and low presets and I would imagine custom. Yes, okay, resolution scale for your super sampling. Tend to leave that alone because uh, if you bump that up and you start super sampling, it is going to be quite a big hit on your graphics card. Okay, so bear that in mind. Super sampling meaning on the resolution scale. If you've got this set at 1080p and you whack your super sampling up, uh, you're effectively rendering more than 1080p and then it's down sampling it to 1080p so you've got more pixels on the screen for the graphics card to deal with it is pretty intensive okay textures ultra oh that's nice it tells you it needs four gigabytes of vram for ultra so anybody with a well on rx sorry a an r9 290 290x 390 390x rx 470, 480, 575, 580. No problems there with Ultra. The reason I list all those cards is because they're pretty much, how can I put it, with generational differences. They are the same architecture, they are the same card. Each card had a revision uh, which improved it. So they had lower power use, uh, better cooling, because the older cards like my 290X here kicks out a hell of a lot of heat. You can probably hear the fans going. This room is over 100 degrees at the moment. Basically, it's a hot day, but my, my graphics card isn't helping. Yeah, On the newer RX cards, your power consumption is way better. And of course, on the 390 and above, you get 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Each card having an incremental clock speed bump. It's a little one, but it's there. So uh, this video, using this card, you're going to see like maybe 3 or 4 FPS more from an RX 580. Definitely no more than that. Okay. Uh, right, so four gigabytes. Oh, that's nice. It tells you the difference. So we got high at two gigabytes, normal at 1.5, and low at one. That's a long time since I've seen a low option at one gigabyte in a game before. That's, that's quite good, like that. Anastropic filtering was set at 16, which is the highest, of course. Eight, four, two, and off. Okay. Shadows. Again, high, medium, low, we're on the highest. Uh, oh, we've only got volumetric fog is low and high. No off. Normally that's a bit taxing. I would have thought there'd been an off option for that, but hey ho. Uh, temporal anti aliasing on, lens flare, motion blur, depth of field, <laughs> chromatic abbreviation. Sorry, guys, I'm not a fan of that. You know, the sort of blue hue it puts around the edges of everything. The game developers seem to love it. Personally, I hate it. I'll leave it on for the, the purpose of these uh, quick graphics tests that I'm doing. But if I was playing this in-game, I would turn that off straight away. I would also turn film grain off as well. 
gives you that sort of I can put it TV quality fuzz to it uh, I prefer a clean picture so if you're in photo mode you definitely want to knock those two off try them you might like it you know the developers clearly like it uh, it's just not me right bloom subsurface scattering normally you notice that more on uh, facial details and stuff yeah pigmentation stuff like that uh, SSAO on yep screen space reflections that's quite a taxing one so if you're struggling on your FPS with your graphics card definitely hit that one off okay that one is a very taxing particles high medium or low and we got remains ultra high medium and low foliage and debris ultra high low and disabled so you can disable foliage sounds a bit rough doesn't it that without it see what that looks like I think level of detail high medium low okay so this is maxed out at 1440p let's have a see how it runs now we've gone through all those options okay so let's I loaded it earlier like I say just to make absolutely sure this game didn't crash when I loaded it I'll click resume we're in the, we're in the same area sort of thing and also see if the keypad, uh, sorry, the joypad kicks in and starts to work. So looking at that, uh, actual RAM, it's a run on an 8 gigabyte machine quite easily. It's staying underneath the 8 gigabyte threshold there. And loading in, we have an even spread across all eight cores of the CPU. So it doesn't look too CPU taxing to be honest. A lot of that is down to game design now catering for the consoles. Uh, the consoles having like a netbook CPU, so you tend to find with a desktop per uh, gaming PC, upgrading your CPU isn't too well, it's not really needed unless you're going to play uh, well, PC only type stuff that's got a lot of CPU calculations to do. Anything that's a console port or is designated to be on consoles at some port, uh, point will not be having uh, a high CPU usage right so we're averaging what we got here 55 60 frames 46 frames a second yeah this is with v-sync on so there'll be no screen tearing switch weapons oh we got a gun look at that some nice little animations there with a the gun like that yeah very nice look at that Datsun classic car bit of a car nut so uh Oh god, he's damaged it. That's not good. Now known as Nissan. Nice interior details there. He's got a system in the back. Check that out. Very nice. Okay, let's go and have a look at some uh, some bits and bobs then. Water. Nice looking. It's quite a nice graphics game actually. Quite impressed with that. Can we go in there? No. There's your volumetric fog. 1440p, this is more than playable. This is fine if you're a stickless for 60 fps you're gonna have to maybe drop something down from uh, ultra or high just one one or two of the settings to keep it at 1440p as you can see it's easy enough to run at 1440p no problem so that's maxed at 1440p yeah we will drop this now straight to low 1080p to see how much of a loss we get I'm expecting a fair bit to be fair so uh, video and we're gonna go down to the most common used res and down to low and hope the game doesn't crash I've had this happen before in different games so, supply Ooh. Okay, we had a bit of a bit of a messed up screen for a few seconds, but it's righted itself. It's it's. Uh, so look, yeah. So I want to save them. I've just put that. Are you sure you want to keep these settings? Yes. Ah, we just lost half the game world, guys. Wow, this game really does scale. <sighs> I'm quite shocked at that. I expected to lose a fair bit, but. We've lost like when it said foliage on and off, it really meant it. Okay. Anyway, the good news is if it's if it's lost that much, this game should scale really well to older hardware. 
I mean, that's... I've, I'm amazed at that, how much that's lost. I really am. But it's good that it, it does, because we're only on... Uh, 1.3 gigabytes of VRAM being used. So anybody with a 1.5 gigabyte card, or higher, can run this game nicely at that. Personally, I would want at least some of the ground textures back. Um, and the shadows are pretty blurry as well, aren't they? I mean, yikes. Where's everything gone? Let's have a look at a tree trunk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's low 1080p. Yeah. Let's uh, knock it up a notch to medium 1080p. And apply. Okay, and back to game. That's better. That's quite an improvement, isn't it? Look at the rock. And the tree trunk's got uh, a, a lot more detail. So the grass has returned to a degree as well. So running it at medium is a very nice compromise. That doesn't look bad at all. If you can run this on medium, guys, you, you're in for quite a nice looking game. I mean, look at that. And all that is under 2 gigabytes of VRAM. We're on 1.7 gigabytes of VRAM. Yeah, that's that's not bad at all. That's bumped it up quite nicely, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Let's try the next notch up. Uh, okay, so we go to. Actually, I just want to check what has medium set it to. Two times anisotropic filtering, and we got medium shadows. We got high volumetric fog. Okay. What have we lost? Temporal anti-aliasing and motion blur depth of field subsurface scattering and screen space reflections are all lost a few bits have been set down to medium and low uh, foliage and debris is on low before it would have been on off yeah it's, it's definitely worth trying to even if you if you can't run this game on, with these settings at least try and keep that one to low so you get like the effects the game is meant to display the artwork right so let's stick this on high and apply that Okay. Okay, we got a lot more grass showing up now. Um, we got tree roots and stuff turning up. Look, you didn't have any of that before. Yeah, that, that looks very nice. Very pretty game. Uh, VRAM usage: two point one and a half gigabytes of VRAM. Again, CPU load minimal, sort of between. 20 and 40 percent per core so it's hardly hardly taxing the, the CPU at all yeah that is very nice let's go and have a quick look around here at all the same stuff yeah water quality's improved the reflections on it uh, where's my stone I was looking at yeah we got a lot more grass now I remember the stone was sort of open and clear and there was a few tufts around here now there's all this. Let's uh, go and have a quick look at the volumetric fog area and cobwebs. You, my spider lives there. No thanks. Yeah, looking good, looking very good. And at 2.2 gigabytes of VRAM now, that's again easy to run. Okay, so you could probably get that under 2 gigabytes VRAM if you dropped a couple of the options down. You won't really lose too much. Okay, so back to here. Now let's see if we can see a difference when we switch it back to Ultra. We'll go Ultra and we'll go all the way up to 3200 by 1800 my 4K if you like for me. Here we go. Let's see if it crashes. Hope not. Okay. Let 
there we go maxed out literally every possible option uh, so the writing's a bit small now isn't it we got three gigabytes of VRAM being used so in theory GTX 970 with its uh, three and a half gigabytes of usable fast RAM might be able to run this at 4k three gigabyte card owners no it is it is going between three and three and a half gigabytes of VRAM so if you got a three gigabyte card I'd run it at 1440p you don't want to go over that threshold because you you're gonna start uh, slowing down and stuttering no problem in playing this at 4k it's uh, FPS 32 31 uh, that's better the tree isn't it look at that <laughs> okay How about where the volumetric fog is does that drop the FPS below 30 we're on sort of 35 no not at all nope does not drop below sort of 35, 34, 38. I don't think we're going to drop below 30, guys. So if you wanted to lock this out at uh, half, re half refresh, 30, you could do and play it at 4K. It's a nice looking game. I think uh, personally, I'd probably lock it at 1440p and run it with all the bells and whistles at 60 frames per second to be fair but uh, that's just my preference but it is there you can run this at a native 4k and at that resolution you could probably go hunting for the spiders yeah I'll leave that to somebody else oh I don't want to do that do I yep dad <laughs> okay so I'd say we've covered all uh, all possibilities there. I mean, when we go back to video, everything is set to max again. There's no higher it can go. So um, very impressive. If this video was any use at all to you, please click like on the way out. On the way out, you know, uh, it does take me time to do these videos, and it is a help. It's nice to see feedback of all forms. If you contribute, you got an NVIDIA card or you got any questions at all, please pop that in the comments. If you've got a particular game uh, you want looking at or a hardware device even that you, you're thinking of buying, drop it in the comments. I'll try and do a review or try and have a run through it for you. No problem. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye for now.